Hello drummers, it's Gary Williams back and in this video segment I'm going to talk about how to pick a pair of drumsticks. So you go to the music store and there's just a bunch of sticks. You're not sure which ones to pick. The modeling system just doesn't seem to make sense. You get a 5A and then you get a 2B. 2B is actually bigger than a 5A and so on. So the kind of things that I'm going to talk about are kind of just basic things. Your hand's going to fit around most any kind of drumstick. The standard length is 16 inches. Some of them are a little shorter. There's been a fashion for a little longer stick. You obviously have the main shaft of the stick. You've got the shoulder. You've got the tip. There's different tip shapes. Those are going to have a larger effect on the sound with cymbals than they would on drum heads. And that's one of the big reasons drummers are so fussy about the shape of the tip. It's because it does produce a certain kind of stick attack on the cymbal. But before we get into that, we're just going to talk about the wood itself. Uh, the sticks that I use are the Vic First sticks. There's a lot of great sticks out of there. The main thing is that these are hickory. Uh, the two common species of wood are hickory and maple wood. Now hickory is very fibrous, pretty dense. It really handles a lot of shock and it'll start to splinter often before it will even break. Uh, maple doesn't operate that way. It's a little lighter so you can generally have a larger piece of wood in your hand and it won't feel quite as heavy if you had the same size piece of hickory in your hand. I like the 16 inch uh, length, I like the standard tip, but I use different kinds of sticks for different styles of music to produce different sounds. So when we're picking out a pair of sticks, it's important to have a pair of sticks that are balanced. Now all these Vic First sticks come in the matchbox, uh, you've seen them in stores, to where they're pitch paired at the factory so both sticks are the same weight. Now what does pitch paired mean? Well, let's just hear the pitch. I'm going to start by dropping this pair of sticks on the cement and you're going to hear the pitch. Stick number one, here's number two. Okay, those are the same weight. Now I have here another pair of 85As. Okay, these are a higher pitch pair because the wood happens to be a little bit more dense. So you'll hear the difference here. Definitely a higher pitch. Here we go. There's the second one. So if I play a little single stroke roll with the high pitch pair, you're going to hear that the pitch is high. And then if I play that same role with my lighter sticks, the pitch goes down. So, if I put one high pitch in the right hand, a low pitch, I get jaws. <laughs> so if you've ever wondered sometimes why your rolls don't sound balanced or even, it could be that one stick is actually heavier than the others. And after a while, you'll begin to hear it right away. You'll even feel it. So whether you want both sticks to be high or low, that's personal preference. I'm going to start with the higher sticks today. So let's drop them again. That's the low pair, and then that's the high pair. Okay. So the next thing is, besides the weight of the stick, is where do you hold it? Okay, and how many fingers? Now I have another video segment on how to grip the stick which goes into more details. So pretty much at this point, once you've selected your pair of sticks and you want them to be balanced, just a little bit of information about the sweet spot. Where, how far up, how far back. There's a very simple procedure that you can find out as to where to hold on to the stick. And this is called finding the balance point or the fulcrum. Now, fulcrum, we've heard the word, the definition is a pivot point on a lever. It's the point where the stick will pivot within your grip. Whether your grip happens to be the thumb and index finger, which some people call the front hand grip, the thumb and middle finger, which is the mid hand grip. There's some people that will even hold the stick way to the back. And my hand actually moves up and down between the front, middle, and back. But I start with the balance point. And the way you find that is you hold the stick to where it's parallel. It's pretty important to have it level with the pad. If you have it at an angle, it doesn't bounce as much, and I'll demonstrate in a moment. So if you're holding it all the way to the back, make a little hook out of your finger, and just put your thumb over it, turn your hand and bend it over. I'm dropping my elbow down. I don't want to hold my arm out. I certainly could. So I'm barely holding onto the stick. You can see it's just, just hanging out of my hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hand, I'm going to pick it up, and I'm going to drop it to see how it responds to a bounce. Pretty dead. So now I'm going to scoop my grip up, boom, moved it up just a little bit, picking up the stick and dropping it again. A little bit more action, but still really dead. So now I'm going to move it up just a little bit more, and then drop it again. Hmm, it's coming to life. 
Now, if I keep experimenting and move up just a little more as I just did, ah, beginning to rebound more freely. And I can keep moving up. Hmm, that feels kind of funny to me now. If I move up one more, oh, now I'm just too far up. So as I screwed up and down the stick, experimenting with where I hold on to it, or rather where the stick is simply cradled in my index finger and thumb, I'll discover there's a sweet spot where it really bounces nicely. So once you discover that, that's really the best place to hold the stick to start with. And if you look down at the drumstick, there may be something printed on the drumstick that you can use as a reference. Uh, with the Vic first sticks, there's this little American flag that they have on the stick right there. So if you just lay your thumb on the flag and then curl your index finger or middle finger around it, whichever grip you want to use, this is going to be the position by which the stick will bounce the most. All right, so I hope this has been helpful, giving you some tips on things to think about when selecting drumsticks. I'll see you next time, and we're going to start hitting the rudiments. Have a good one. This is Gary Williams signing out. Bye-bye.